I am working on my course materials and I've got a pot of soup on the stove there. <laughs> a pot of soup on the stove that I'm going to run in the pressure canner in a few minutes. Um, I'm working on my syllabus. A, a, a colleague posted a really good article about syllabi that gave me some inspiration to kind of retool mine a little bit and make it a little bit more inspirational as well as informational. Um, and then maybe the students will refer back to it, I hope. Um, you know, that's one of our biggest jokes as professors is get the students to re read the syllabus, read the syllabus, right? And um, so that's one of the things that I'm going to work on today um, is to try to retool my syllabus for the class that I'm redoing to try to make it more um, more informative and, and, and make them realize what the purpose of them having to take this class is, whether they're physics majors or, or physical science minors or whatever. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on this morning. Um, I've been up for a while. I you know, took care of the animals outside like I always do. Uh, I've mopped, swept and mopped the floors. And then I realized that the trap on my kitchen sink on one side has come off. Um, whoever put the sink in was just somebody that my dad knew when they put this sink in and they didn't really know what they were doing. So um, I, I need to have it completely redone. But in a couple of years, I'm wanting to have the, a new sink and new countertops and everything done anyway. So I'm kind of just trying to limp along with it until then you know um, i don't want to spend money on it twice if i don't have to so i'm just kind of trying to make do with it for right now and i think it'll be okay it just i didn't realize it was off and i looked down and there was a po big puddle, pool of water not a puddle because i would have blamed the dogs probably for that but like a pool of water on the floor and it was coming out from underneath the sink so i got to mop the kitchen floor twice so it ought to be extra clean <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so um, that's kind of what I'm working on this morning. Um, I need to go mail some things for the prize winners. Uh, I was going to mail them yesterday, and by the time I got done at work, our little post office in town closes kind of early, so I, I did not get by the post office before it had closed. Um, so I may run to town later today and uh, mail those things. If not, I'll promise I'll mail them out by Monday and get them to the two prize winners, Christine and, and Jessica. Um, I decided I'm going to wait and record an episode next week on Monday like I was normally doing, um, just because that'll get me back on schedule uh, for this fall semester, since Mondays is going to be the day that I'll be free to record, because Tuesday is my uh, late day. I always have one late day where I've got a lab that runs until almost 6 o'clock, and um, you know, by the time I get home from that, I don't really have time to do much of anything except take care of the animals and um, put the, you know, do, do the minimum of what I have to do to get everybody taken care of and comfortable for the day and then get myself around and go to bed, basically. Um, so, but fortunately, the other days I get out of class by 11 o'clock so I can do my office hours and everything and, and be done with my day, you know, with my that part of my day, and then I'll have the afternoons to work on grading or, or whatnot, which is nice. Um, so, signed up to do planetarium shows again. Looks like I'm going to be doing them on Wednesdays this semester. Um, we're already starting to get requests for those, and I went ahead and booked the planetarium, like I said, for Super Science Saturday, and... Um, for Girls of Promise, which I did in the spring. I remember, if you remember, I talked about um, the lady who was the Arkansas's hidden figure. She was the speaker at, at our Girls of Promise program. And actually, two of my friends, I think, are going to be breakout speakers. My vet, who you met in a little shorty video, and then a friend of mine, Darsha, who is, um, works, is a geologist, and she works for the Arkansas Department of Health, I believe. Uh, and, and Darsha is getting married. She is... We used to call ourselves the Spinsters Club. She is 61 years old, and she is getting married for the first time to um, a friend of hers from college. It was sort of a, they were very close in college and graduate school, and then as life does, you kind of um, 
go your separate ways and then some, sometimes like in, in happy stories, you know, on TV, Hallmark's, Hallmark movies, <laughs> you meet up again later in life. So um, I'm, I'm happy for her. I think that's wonderful. Um, you know, it, it's, it's nice to see little stories like that with a happy ending. So I'm happy for her. She's getting married in March and um, that's cool. So, um, yeah, so I am going to work on my syllabus here today for my, um, for my class, and I'm going to can this soup in the pressure canner, so I'll probably show you a little bit about that, and that's pretty much going to be my day, I think. I'm going to, you know, I've swept and mopped, like I said, I've run in a load of laundry right now, and basically just getting ready for school to start. <laughs> Got to start getting some clothes lined out. Lucky chewed another pair of my jeans last night and it was a good pair, one of my good pairs, and he just chewed the waistband, but I've got to take him to the vet. I guess there's something going on with his teeth that's causing him to want to chew and I've got to get to the bottom of that because this has come on just this summer and I thought maybe it was just anxiety, so I've been taking him places and trying to show lots of extra, extra attention to him, but it doesn't seem to be helping any, and um, so maybe the, the next thing is to rule out something going on with his teeth that are causing him to want to chew, so I'll do that, make a schedule an appointment for that. Um, yeah, so other than that, everybody seems to be doing well, and he's doing fine. He just wants to chew on my blue jeans, um, which I don't have that many pairs of good blue jeans, so I have to be careful that I don't tear them up. Uh, but anyway, so that's kind of where we're at today, and we're going to work on some class paperwork, and I'll check back in when they I was later. walking in from the garden, and I spied this friend on my gourd plant. I've never seen one so bright green. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Well, I did a little quick walk out to the garden to get some okra pods for my soup, and I just grabbed a few things. Uh, the okra and the purple bell peppers will probably go in my pot of soup. Everything else is probably going to go in the dehydrator today. Okay, so I've put my vegetable soup. I've got pretty much exactly five quarts of vegetable soup in there. And what I try to do is I try to scoop out vegetables first and kind of put the cans maybe two-thirds full of vegetables. And then I try to put broth on top of that. And this is a broth that I made with the venison bones and some onions and garlic. Um, so I've got in here I've got corn, potatoes, okra, uh, yard long beans, squash, zucchini, carrots, and some bell peppers that I picked this morning. And then when I made my broth I added a few hot peppers just to give it a little zing. Um, so what I've got is I've got my canner. Now you'll notice in the canner there's not as much water because with the pressure canner you don't cover up your jars. You need to create superheated steam basically in a superheated environment where the water boils at a, at a um, higher temperature because it's under pressure and then that kills any da dangerous bacteria that would be in there so this this canner there's a there's a recommendation of how much water is supposed to be in it I probably need to add just a little bit because it's supposed to have three quarts of water in it for this size canner, but that will not come close to covering the jars, but you're not supposed to. But I've got my lids and rings in here. This is what's called hot pack. So I actually had these jars in the canner getting hot to start with because uh, the soup is hot. So you want your jars and your material that you're putting in the jars to be at the same temperature when you pack them. And that way you avoid cracking anything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my lids and rings on and load my canner. Okay, so I've got my five quart jars in here. I put the lids and the rings on. I wipe the rims, put the lid on, put the rim on, finger tight. Now what I'm going to do is put my lid on. Now, you don't start the timer on this just yet. So I'm going to get my lid. So here's my lid. I showed it on the podcast one day. I've had this calibrated uh, at the extension office. So what you do is you put your lid on, and I always have to fidget around with it. Oh, I did it right the very first time. So what it does is there's these latches underneath here that match up to notches on the top. And when they line up, when you push this like so, it locks, it locks that lid on. Now, I'm not going to start the timer yet, okay? What I have to do is I have to wait until this is open right now. So I have to wait until steam is clearly coming out of this 
and then this will stay up on its own okay to tell me and that seals that pop-off valve there okay when the steam is clearly coming out of this I will take my weight and I'll put it on that and close that off then what will happen is this pressure gauge I don't know how well y'all can see that this pressure gauge will start to rise okay and when it gets to 10 to 10 pounds of pressure which is right here then I will start my timer now this is where I have to pay attention because I have to um, I have to mark I have to monitor my pressure I don't want it to start getting too high so what I'm gonna find is I'm gonna have to constantly back down the pressure or the, the, the fire the temperature of the stove to keep this at 10 pounds of pressure because once it starts heating up it's gonna go so I have to keep an eye on this and so this is why I'm gonna sit at my computer over here and work on my class stuff while this is running so I can Okay, watch. so now, I don't know how well you can see it, but there is definitely steam coming out of this, and then this is up. So that tells me that it is ready to put my weight on. So I will put my weight on. And what that does is that takes advantage of the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. So pressure times volume equals some constants times the temperature so what I've just done is I have stopped the volume from being able to expand before when the when the steam could rush out the volume was allowed to expand and so even though the temperature was going up the pressure stayed constant it didn't go up any now what I've done is I have choked the volume off where it can't get any bigger so now as the temperature is increasing inside here the pressure has to go up so P times V equals something times T. So what that means is the combination of P times V has to go up if T goes up. So T is going up because I've got my burner on. So either P can go up or V can go up or they can both go up. But in this case, I'm holding V constant because I'm not letting the steam escape anymore. So now P has to respond and eventually what we'll see is this dial will start to go up. So this is where I have to start paying attention now to whatever I'm doing. I mean, I can wash dishes and work on class paperwork, but I can't go outside and feed or go to the store or whatever. I have to stay here and monitor my pressure. Okay, so I've been taking a break here. I made myself some lunch and I've been watching Fat Squirrel Speaks and working on my class stuff. But if you'll look, our pressure gauge is now coming on to 10 pounds. So what that means is I'm ready to start my timer. So for quart jars, for quart jars, they need to process for 85 minutes. Okay, 85 minutes will get enough cook time on them that the, there we go, 85 minutes, an hour and 25 minutes. That means that that'll kill any of the dangerous bacteria not quite to 10 pounds but it's close enough so now what I have to do is I have to start monitoring my temperature because what will happen if I don't sit here and watch this the longer this goes the hotter it will get and the more the pressure will go up if you'll see there's some dark lines here around 10 as long as you're in that range you're okay you start getting above that dark line you need to start watching it and backing off the temperature Okay, so right now, my stove, I had it at 8, now it's down to 6, and by the time I'm done, I'll probably be all the way over on the low setting, because it will have sufficiently heated up to the point that I won't need to run this anymore. So now, I'm just going to let this go, but I'm going to sit here and work on my class stuff and eat my lunch. Okay, the timer has gone off. Now, what you do now is you turn the heat off and you leave it alone. You don't touch anything because right now this is under 10 pounds of pressure and if you were to try to unlock this lid it would blow off in your face. So don't touch anything until this dial is at zero and then this little thing right here has fallen down. Don't touch anything. So I'm going to let it sit. It's safe now to kind of go on and do other things because there is no more fire under it. There's no more heat going into it so the temperature is dropping 
So what you'll see is you'll see this pressure gauge slowly go back to zero. And then once it's gone to zero and then this is falling down, then it's safe to open. But even then, I still wait for 10 minutes after it's gone back to zero. And when I unlock the lid, I lift everything away from me. Okay? But we'll do that after a while when it cools off. Well, the soup is cooling off and I have fed and watered and um, was going to go put out cattle mineral and mow pastures for a while. But my tractor needs to be put on the charger. So, um, I'm letting it charge and I'm working on my... Um, couch and cracker socks. I'm done with the toe increases and I just started the pattern repeat. So, um, the light in here is not so good, but yeah, I just started the pattern repeat. Um, this is a pattern by Julia. It's her first sock pattern from the Happy Knitting Podcast. And, um, I fell off the sock wagon. Boy, I was running and gunning at the beginning of the year and I was going to make a pair of socks a month and I made a pair of socks in May and haven't made one since. So if I'm going to have 12 pairs of socks by the end of the year, I better get to rocking. But I kind of think that maybe I won't worry about that too much and I'll just make socks when I feel like it. I was actually in the mood to pick these up and work on them. So um, that's a good sign. But uh, I did get me some smaller uh, needles. I went from knitting on a 2.5 US size 1 or one and a half to knitting on 2.25s US size uh, one because I'm finding that my socks, because I tend to be a fairly loose knitter, I'm finding that my socks are a little bit loosey-goosey and I'd like for them to be a little bit snugger. Um, so I'm hoping that this will help. Uh, the yarn is just some craftsy yarn that I bought back at the beginning of the year. So if I can get them done by the end of the month, they'll count for the summer stash down on her podcast. I didn't get them done in time for her knit along on these socks, but um, I'm hoping I'll get them done in time. So I'm gonna do about, I'm gonna try to get through maybe half this pattern before I go out and check my tractor again because I need to put that mineral out. It is like super humid outside. It's not super hot, but it is so humid that the minute you walk outside, you just start dripping with sweat. Um, so, the idea of wrestling with getting this tractor started was not very exciting to me. I'm hoping that it'll just start on its own off the charger. Um, if not, I'll just drive the mineral over there in my car because it's in the trunk of my car and um, I'll take it over there like that. But the soup is done. Um, you know, the, the, um, the, the little thing has fell down, so I'm going to let it cool for a little while longer, though. I've been catching up on some podcasts. I finished watching The Fat Squirrel Speaks, and then um, Army Wife Knitting Life had a new podcast up, so I've been watching that. Um, and I've also been watching some um, stuff to get excited for my classes. I've been watching some um, biography videos on, like, Lise Meitner and um, Emmy Noether and looking up some minority uh, physicists to try to talk about those in my class. And I revamped my syllabus. I, I, the article that my colleague had posted was really interesting because it's really easy when you've been teaching. I've been teaching for 20 years, and it's really easy to turn your syllabus into a very dry rule book and you know, because, you know, things happen and you're like, okay, well, I didn't plan for that eventuality, so I need to say that. Because, you know, as a professor, we get a little bit gun shy because, you know, when students want to protest, that, that syllabus is our contract with them. So you want to make sure you've covered all your bases. But we forget, too, that it is the introduction of the students to the class. And, and if we want them to be excited about the class, we need to show them why we're excited. And I had kind of forgotten that, to be quite honest. I mean, I can, I, I try to act excited in the classroom, but that syllabus is sort of your first impression of the class and even of the teacher. So I decided to revamp the section. I have a section in there about why do you take this class? Well, you're taking this class because you have to, because you're a physics major. You're taking this class because you want a physical science minor. But what I wanted to make the case for why does this class matter to day-to-day -to -day life? And really, the cool thing is, is all technology, 
modern technology, lots of the advances in modern medicine in terms of treatment and imaging and everything are all based on modern physics. So it is the very essence of our day-to-day -day life matters, you know, this subject matters to that. So I'm trying to, trying to, try to convey that and, and I, I deleted all the descriptive stuff that I had and I went back and I put in, you know, this is why I'm passionate about this subject. This is why you should be think this is cool. You know, this is why this is cool. And then I did the same thing for um, the justification for the service learning thing about, you know, this is why this is why we do this. And then also, why are we reading these essays about science literacy and why are we focusing on, you know, looking at the contributions and roadblocks to minorities in, in STEM, particularly in physics, because physics is a very male-dominated field. I mean, it's just, it just is. It always has been. And, and part of that is, like I mentioned in my podcast when I was talking about Emmy Noether, you know, women weren't allowed to go to college. And when they were allowed, they weren't allowed to graduate. And if they were allowed to graduate, they weren't really given their degree. I mean, it just... You know, we've progressed so far since then, but we are still waiting on the demographics to sort of catch up to that, you know. Um, so, and and coming from a very impoverished state, you know, I, I know what it's like to struggle with trying to afford college, you know. And, and back when I went to college, and this is certainly dating myself, full-time tuition was $440 a semester. And now I think it's around 4,000 a semester. I mean, that's expensive for anybody. You know, um, and like I had mentioned already, a lot of our students are on scholarship or financial aid. Um, you know, we have a lot of students who qualify for work study. Um, you know, so, and we've got a lot of students who are, already married and have families and are trying to to manage to go to college and support a family and that's very hard to do um so you know it's it's the struggle is real i guess so but i want them to at least maybe if they feel a little bit of the passion and the zeal that i feel for the subject it'll get them excited and it'll make them understand that i'm not trying to be a roadblock to their graduating that i'm that i'm there because and I'm hoping to convey that, you know, this is exciting stuff. This is undirected research has led us to so many amazing discoveries. And even though, you know, some congressman might say, well, what is the practical application of whatever? There's been so many amazing discoveries that have happened because of of the offshoots of, of research that seemed like it had no practical application whatsoever. I mean, computers, cell phones, Velcro, microwaves. There is a there is a, a method of now of imaging, early detection at breast cancer imaging that is a direct result of development of sensors for infrared telescopes. I mean, it, it, so we are an, we are by nature as human beings, explorers and discoverers and so I want to convey to my students the excitement of that and the value of that because we need society to appreciate that and understand that so hopefully hopefully I can convey that zeal and that enthusiasm to them in the classroom um, and if I can come out the gate doing that maybe I'll keep them engaged right off the bat you know, that's what we hope for. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of where my mind has been this morning. Um, I'm not the fastest sock knitter, obviously, if y'all are watching my my knitting rhythm. You know, I'm a very slow knitter. I know there's a lot of people that are a lot faster than me. I'm a continental knitter, and I'm left-handed on top of that. So, um, you know, I'm kind of a slow knitter, and I'm not the most graceful or dexterous person either, so knitting very small things is a challenge for me. Um, but I'm getting better. <laughs> That's all we can do, right, is keep trying to get better. Anyway, um, I'm going to go finish this next repeat, and I'm going to go out and see if I can get my tractor to start. And if I can, then we'll, we'll all go mow some weeds. And if I can't, we'll all go put some mineral out with my car. <laughs> 
Okay, I'll check back in. Well, there you go. Five quarts of vegetable soup I pulled out of the canner. You can see the liquid is still really hot. It's still bubbling. Uh, these will not pop like the ones coming out of the water bath because these cooled down in the canner. So they should have already pulled a vacuum seal. I'll let them sit overnight and then tomorrow I'll take the rings off. I'll check to make sure that they're sealed and then I'll label them and put them in my pantry. Okay, well I give up. Plus there's red wasps around my tractor right now and I don't have any wasp spray. So I'm not willing to fight the red wasp just to mow some pastures today. So I'm just gonna take the feed over there in my car. I wanna move so I can go. that gate behind me so I can pour this out without them bothering me. Hi babies. Hi babies. Y'all pretty babies. Alright guys, hang on. I'll pour the rest of it out. Just a minute. Yeah, y'all are fine. Hang on. Hang on. Move. Hang on, sis. There you go. I poured it out. There you go. It's all the same. It's all the same. Hi, Mama. Can I get my... Hey, buddy. I'll pour some out in here, and that way y'all got many places. I've got to get that tractor started. This little scout weed's gonna get big enough that it's gonna bloom, and I don't want that. There you go, there's the last little bit of it, sis. You're fine. Go on. What, y'all don't like it? It's all the same. I know, y'all are wanting some feed, and I didn't put you any feed out. That's good for you, though. Well, I'm sorry it wasn't what you ordered, but it's what you need, okay? Sometimes what we need doesn't taste like what's good for us, or excuse me, what we like. What's good for us doesn't taste good like what we like. Like, I like cinnamon rolls. Not good for me. Delicious, but not good for me. So y'all go on. Oh, uh, y'all going back to check out the first one now. Okay. Uh, Bye. Well, I'm sitting out here with Gusty. She's got her ice boot on, and of course Charlie is watching, and everybody else is finishing up their second second supper. I gave them some lunch, I guess, and now I gave them some more at supper time. So I've got Gusty separated out here because I'm feeding her alfalfa, and these guys definitely don't need that. <laughs> so it'd be too way too much protein and stuff for them. So um, anyway. Yeah, I'm out here enjoying the evening. It is still very hot and muggy. Got a real pretty sunflower blooming over here. And then off to the east west, there was a little little pop-up shower. It's dissipating now. It's still got a little thunder going on in it. But, and I've been watching the hummingbirds. Can't probably tell, but 
There's been a hummingbird, a couple of hummingbirds working that feeder over there. This evening, you, know, you can kind of see her moving around. It's a female. I saw a male earlier, but right now it's the female that's out there. And those are my granny's four o'clocks. Um, I know Shirley of Shirley Knit said she would like some seeds. If anybody else would like some four o'clock seeds, let me know. These are the old fashioned fuchsia ones. But anyway, also if anybody would like some gourd seeds, I'm going to have plenty of those. I've got dipper gourds and bushel gourds. I've got Gusty's holders twisted. I didn't even notice that. Uh, but anyway, so we're just sitting out here enjoying the evening for now. Okay, guys. Well, I've put Gusty up for the evening, and I'm re-recording this little segment because I went on a big ramble about some stuff, and it was probably nothing that y'all needed to hear. So I decided to start again. I'm still working on my socks, which are obviously my tension is not tight enough because these are too big, I think. But they'll be all right. I'll make them work. Um. What I wanted to say and what I kind of got sidetracked on in that ramble is I was talking with Jessica from Army Wife Knitting Life. I watched her podcast earlier today uh, while I was eating lunch and she was talking about struggling with feelings of not being enough. And I get that, you know, I think particularly women are given messages by media that if you're not a particular size and not a particular height, then don't act a particular way that you're inadequate. And we know that's BS, right? We all know that that's bull. It's hard to remember that at times. It's hard to remember that. It's hard to remember that when you're feeling a little down and, and feeling a little hard on yourself. You know, I was having a moment earlier today where I was thinking about my clothes. You know, I've let my clothes situation get kind of cruddy. You know, I need some new shoes. I've got a pair of tennis shoes that are pretty good and I've got some boots that I can wear to work. But you know, I'm not a clothes shopper. I'm not really a clothes shopper. I don't like to shop for clothes. Um, you know, I don't like to, I don't keep up with whatever the latest trends are, you know, but I've kind of let my clothes situation get a little wore down. I'm probably heavier than I've been in a long time. Um, you know, I've started walking again and that's going to help, I know, but it's easy to feel bad about yourself. Especially, you know, when it's hot and you don't feel like dressing up and you don't feel like doing anything with your hair. You know, y'all have seen my hair wadded up on my head more days than I'm not lately. Um, you know, it's very easy to get down and, and stuff. And then also, too, you know, I look around my farm and I see the things that need to be done. And I'm like, and people are like, I don't know how you do all that. Well, the fact is I don't do it all. I don't. I can't. It's physically impossible for me to do it all. You know, right now I'm looking, I'm thinking about, you know, I just got through putting Gusty up and I'm going, okay, I need to muck underneath the rabbit cages. I need to muck out the chicken runs. I need to mow pastures. And I couldn't get my doggone tractor started today. I need to finish straightening up that spare room. I need to organize the garage again. I need, you know, I mean, the list is endless. I mean, I'm looking at this fence row over here that needs to have these cedar trees cut out or limbed up at least out of it. And it is impossible for one person to keep up with all that. So I do what I can, when I can. Sorry, Barn Kitty decided she wanted to have up close and personal time with the phone and knocked it down. I do what I can, you know, at the end of the day, if my animals are happy and safe and comfortable, and if I'm happy and safe and comfortable, then that's enough, right? I, you know, and I've jokingly referred to relationships in the past i mean i will just be blatantly honest people ask me is there anything i can't do and i will tell you there is one thing i absolutely can't do and that's have a healthy normal relationship and so i just don't do it because in the past i have been told that i either need to get rid of this place or i need to get rid of these animals or you know, I was called horrible things for having him or taking care of him. Um, you know, because what it boiled down to is the, the people wanted me to focus all my time and energy and attention on them. And frankly, that's not going to happen. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I've been single my entire life. I mean, I've had relationships, but 
you know, I've never been married. I've, I have gotten where I've gotten on my own. I mean, my parents helped me when they could, but they were so, we were poor. I mean, you know, I, I paid for my college education, paid for my graduate school education. They helped me where they could, and they did provide me a car and help, help me that way, you know. But as far as my tuition and my housing and my groceries, that was all on me if I wanted it, and I knew it was going to be that way. And that's fine, you know. They helped me where as much as they possibly could, and they were very supportive of me, and they were very proud of me. You know, they just didn't have any money. I mean, they just didn't have any money. And so, when someone tells me, well, you don't need me. Well, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't, because I don't need anyone but myself. You know, I would love for my parents to still be alive and me be able to still visit with them. But, you know, did I, but I, what I tried to explain to them is you don't want me to need you. You want me to enjoy being with you. You don't want me to need you because if I need you, then that creates an imbalance of power. <laughs> um, but anyway, so having said all of that, it's very easy for women to be told you should be able to have the successful relationship and a career and kids and do the birthday party worthy of a Pinterest pin and fix the school lunches that look, you know, Facebook photo worthy and, you know, every day your child goes to school looking like an ad out of, you know, a American Eagle Outfitters ad or whatever, you know, that's just not the way life works. The only people that can do that are ones that have staff. <laughs> And I don't know anybody that's got staff. You know, the, the closest anybody I know to having staff is Miss Marianne. We all help her out at the barn, and we do that because we enjoy riding over there. You know, don't fall for that. Don't fall for the Pinterest pictures. You know, you are enough even if your child's school lunches don't look like a Pinterest photo. You are enough even if you're not a size 5 I haven't been a size five since I was about five. You are enough if you're married, if you're single, if you're divorced, if you're widowed, if you're in a committed relationship, if you're gay, if you're straight, if you're bi, if you're trans, if you're, if you're whatever religion you are, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, pagan, Buddhist, it doesn't matter. If you're being a good person and you're trying to be good to other people it doesn't matter you are enough that is the bottom line if you're a good person and you strive to be a good person and you are good to other people that is enough everything else is window dressing everything else that's the bottom line so i guess i will leave y'all with that i'm gonna go put the chickens up and I'm going to finish this row on these socks so I'll remember where I'm at, if Barn Kitty will let me. And um, I guess I'll see y'all tomorrow. I appreciate y'all's feedback. I appreciate y'all visiting with me online. Um, you know, if you ever, I will extend the same invitation that Jessica extended. If you ever need somebody to talk to, contact me on Instagram, contact me on Ravelry, you know, um, you know we we are a community whether we've ever never met face to face or not we are a community and we're here and I'm here to support you in this community just like I would if you were in my community face to face so until I see y'all again <laughs> be good to each other and take care of each other and peace out y'all bye